Hi, and welcome back. Today we are going to talk about dimensioning, but first, let's think for a moment about the main aim behind the use of technical drawings. We use technical drawings to describe parts. This description could be used for manufacturing or for quality control. It could also be used for cost calculation. In any case, to properly describe a part, not only that you will need to define the size of the part, but also you will need to define the positions and sizes of all the different features of the part as well. And this is basically what we call dimensioning a part. With that being said, let's now look at the different types of dimensions. One of the most common types of dimensions is linear dimension. A linear dimension is the distance between two lines. These two lines can be the edges of the part, for example, to describe the height, width, or length of the part. You could use a linear dimension to specify the position of a feature, for example, the position of a hole in the part. In this case, the linear dimension is going to be the distance between the one edge of the part and the center line of the hole. Another common type of dimensions is the diameter dimension. Like the diameter of a cylinder, for example, you could either place the diameter dimension on the view of the drawing, which shows the circular shape of the feature, or you can place it on the side view, where you see the cylinder as two lines. In any case, a diameter sign is necessary to put before the number specifying the dimension. But there's another way to dimension circular features in which is to describe the radius of the feature instead of the diameter. In that case, this is a radial dimension, and it has to be noted with the letter R instead of the diameter sign. This is more commonly used when the circular feature is not a complete circle. For example, you have a fillet on the edges of the part. In that case, you only have part of the circle and not the complete circle. One other type of dimensions is the angular dimension. This type of dimension is used to specify the angle between two lines on the part. Again, these two lines can be two edges of the part, or they can be central lines of features. Then there are dimensions that are used to describe special features. For example, to describe threads or chamfers. In that case, there is a standard way of describing these features, but we will have a deeper look on these special dimensioning types later on in the course. That's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about the rules of dimensioning. See you in the next lecture.